That's what I wanted to tell you. <laughs> but I don't understand. I knew you wanted to understand. You're the one who gave it up, T.D. There are some boxes in the foyer. Please take them with you when you leave. And I used to be black. <laughs> but according to Wikipedia, I'm multiracial. That's actress Marianne Alda, star of television shows, stand-up comedy, and plays. Faces. Alda has been in the business and for over 30 years. From daytime dramas <laughs> to nighttime comedy. Alda has Especially tackled it all. We caught up with the actress to talk about her life in front of the camera and behind the, the camera. To find out who is Marianne Alda. Uh, a friend of mine said once, the definition of a star is somebody who doesn't fit the breakdown. The breakdowns come out. There's nothing in the breakdown that a casting director would call in and say, oh, we got to get Marianne Alda for this because they could get anybody. So I'm not trying to do that. What I'm trying to do is create something for myself so that eventually they'll say, who is this Mariana? Oh, she's fun. Oh, let's, let's, let's write something for her. I wanted to tell stories. I mean, my, it wasn't so much that I wanted to be an actress in the theater because I didn't really know about the theater as a little kid or even the movies that much, but I thought, I want to be on television, I want to be on the Mickey Mouse Club, and I want to dance and do all those things that those kids are doing. And the funny thing is, because I do motivational speaking like to young people, and so I tell them that story, and I tell them the secret of dreaming big. I guess if you have a big dream and you reach for the stars and you don't make it, um, then you have to settle for the moon, and that's not bad. But if you reach for a little dream that's you know that's on the curb somewhere and you fall off the curb, you're going to end up in the gutter. So that's really not a very good thing to aspire to. Um, and I say, you know, I never got my big dream. I never got to be on the Mickey Mouse Club. But the Mickey Mouse Club used to come on at 3.30 in the afternoon. And immediately after that, at 4 o'clock, the edge of night would come on. So I say, I never got my big dream. I never got to be on the Mickey Mouse Club but I got to be on the edge of night and second best isn't half bad. So, you know, it's just about aspiring to what you want and, and being happy with what you get. Growing up in Chicago, Alda always knew she would one day be in television. TD, what are you doing here? Well, Anthony said you were having a tough time. Look, Ellen, you can't hang around the house in your room. Some of her work include working opposite O.J. Simpson on the about? HBO I late night soap First in 10 as before. Ellen Parker. Hey, um, how was it working with the juice? <laughs> uh, it was, you know something? I, I think there were two O.J.'s. There was the personality, and then there was the real person, but that person was in service to the personality. And so he was always extremely pleasant to work with. And we would shoot really long hours because we would each, um, each uh, uh, series was 13 episodes. And so we would shoot like all the scenes from different episodes on different locations. So we would shoot everything out of context and out of sync to be cost effective. So we might shoot scenes from episode six, episode five, and episode 10 all on one day. So you really had to know what's happening in the script if we were on that one one shoot. Something's missing from our lives. Calvin, where is all this coming from? All this big break came in 1981 when she starred as lawyer Dee Dee Bannister on the ABC soap opera, The Edge of Night. She played the role until 1984 when the soap was canceled due to low ratings. Well, uh, let's see. I was brought on initially to uh, just create a love triangle between Calvin and his wife Star. So initially I was supposed to be on, I was told I was supposed to be on for three months. And I, there were four of us who made the finals to screen test. And they would do the screen test at the end of the day's shoot. So you were on the set. And uh, John Sedwick was the director. He brought us in. He showed us the set. He introduced the four ladies, all of us, to, to Irving Allen Lee, who played Calvin. 
And then he told us all to go back to the green room and one by one, each person had a chance to do a rehearsal and then they would put it down on tape. After leaving daytime, Alda took on primetime television. She co-starred in the 1991 CBS sitcom, The Royal Family, created by Eddie Murphy. The show starred Red Fox, Della Reese, and movie stars Lorenz Tate and future Glee star Naya Rivera. Aside from being busy in television for most of the 1980s and 90s, Alda spent a lot of time with her family, especially her son Christopher. But life wasn't always so sweet for Alda. In an emotional moment, Alda talks about her unsuccessful 13-year marriage. And it's like he was colorblind, and so he would ask me to like pick his ties and stuff like that, and I to match things to make sure that they match. And I said. This matches, he said, are you sure? And I said, I'm positive, I'm looking at it, it matches. Because what he was seeing was totally different. And he said, this is probably all wrong. You're the kind of person that if I had spinach between my teeth, you wouldn't tell me. But you know, if you listen to the, to the story of Ginger Peachy King, not too dissimilar from, I mean, I've pulled from- Yeah, because so I was saying to myself now, um, like one man, because you mentioned one man was 25 years. No, no, no. 25 years all together. All, all together. 12 all here, 13 there. Hi, uh, my name is Ginger Peachy Keen, and I am an adult sex ed evangelist. And Alda has motivator. performed the show all over the country, but it was in New York City at Dixon Place where she rocked the crowd with her talks of sex in the seasoned woman. <laughs> Now at 65, Alda has shown no signs of slowing down with acting and performing. Slowing down? Like it's retiring or anything? No. Actors do not retire. I mean, because first of all, who are you going to get to play the 90-year-old ladies? A 90-year-old lady. When they want a 90-year-old lady, they'll call me. When I'm 90. <laughs> not today, but... No, no. I think it's it's not because acting is not a job. The job is trying to get work. That's the job. But if you're creating work for yourself, that's not a job either. So I'm not trying to, oh, hire me, hire me, hire me. I have hired myself. Uh, hi, I'm Ernie Peicher, but you know me as Ernie Townsend. Right. Yeah, well, yeah I know you clip from the edge of the night. Right. All right, so tell me, what did you think of tonight's show? It was fabulous. It was fabulous. It was funny. It was sophisticated, but it was very intelligent. I mean, she told a lot of jokes, told a lot of very personal stories that were really, really funny, but there was all of this idea and philosophy. I mean, I brought my oldest daughter here, and my oldest daughter was cheering and screaming uh, about this because this is what people in their 20s are going through. Uh, because it, it, it all repeats over and over again. It was a wonderful act. And she's so funny. She really is funny. Have you seen Mary, uh, Marianne perform in anything else? Like this is the first time I've seen Marianne in 24 years. Really? Tonight. Wow. Well, I mean, we've communicated by email, and I've talked to her on the phone a couple of times, but this is the first time I've seen her in person in 24 years. What's that? What did you think of the overall tone of the show? Well, it was, so, it was so different. I mean, it wasn't, as I say in the chapter in my in the book, I, forgive me for saying it was my book, but it's our book, but it had a different format. It wasn't who's uh, boinking who, who's the father of what kid. It was a mystery element, and it was a... Um, the television version of the radio Perry Mason series and then they went on to TV in 1956 and 
it was always number two in the ratings. I'm in touch with uh, Bruce Martin, who played the dual roles of Keith Whitney and Joel Lockwood, and I had the chance, as you know, to go to the filming site, site on the, in the Pocono Mountains, Lord's Valley, where they filmed his killing Uncle Charlie and his foothold down the spiral staircase. I had a wonderful time. Thank you very much.